What's going on everybody? It's Zach Michael here. Today, we're making a video kind of breaking down how I make placement ready drums and placement ready tracks and kind of my thought process on how I create drums and I create full beats for artists. Now, by no stretch of imagination is the way that I do it the only way you can do it, but this method has worked for me and I've gotten hundreds of songs to artists over the years. So I think my thought process applies for some artists. I've been in a lot of sessions. I do a lot of remote sessions with artists over Zoom, Discord, all different platforms and programs. So I think I have a philosophy on how a lot of artists are picking what tracks they use and what they don't. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now the first thing I have here is just a sample that I've made. This is one of my free samples. Every single week, I make 100 melody loops and I get those out to producers. I've done that for like almost five years now without missing a week. And if you want those, hit me up on like IG or Twitter or something like that, and I can go ahead and get those over to you. So the first thing, obviously, when arranging your beat and kind of doing the drums is there has to be sections. I think while this is not always true for every single song, the majority of songs have multiple sections. So I have the stems of the loop and here are all the stems and they sound like this. Now, that sounds pretty cool. I like the loop, of course, but I want there to be variation because just that playing over and over again for like three minutes could work with the right artist and the right drums, etc. But to really kind of increase your chances of keeping a listener engaged and keeping an artist engaged, you want to have sections. So I'm kind of having different sections. Like there's this section here, which is more minimal, doesn't have as many elements. And there's this eight bars, which is just the piano, very stripped down, very minimal. And now here's just, you know, a little single violin line with the keys. Now, how we're going to actually arrange this when the beat comes around is a little bit different. But this is just kind of how I arrange whenever I take a sample. So I can just listen to it continuously as I make the beat. And there'll be different sections. So, first thing I like to do is just drag and clap. Or like a snare, or really whatever you want the foundation to establish some rhythm is. You can get more complex with this uh, pattern, of course, but today I'm feeling like keeping it simple. And again, just because I make this beat with this thought process doesn't mean every beat is like this, because I feel like it would get very boring if you just made the same type of beat, the same drum pattern over and over again. So of course I change things up. Of course I use different sounds and even some of the rules that I'm saying in this video, quote unquote, are rules that I break. Like I'm going to be talking about hi-hats pretty soon. But I have beats where I didn't use hi-hats or I approach them differently. So there's not really like a one size fits all. But we're just going to go ahead and layer the clap with a snare. And just kind of add these little bounce snares in there. And I like playing with velocity. So we're going to reduce the velocity on those. Just lowers the volume a little bit. I also like to kind of do like a rough mix as I go. So you're gonna see I do that. Again, that doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but, and I still do like a more final mix after, but this is just a quick mix. So what I did there, I just selected two step hi-hats, but within my hi-hats, this is how I approach it. I like to leave room for an artist in most tracks. Uh, a lot of times when you're in sessions with artists, especially rappers where a lot of people do really crazy hi-hat pattern designs. You may notice it's harder for the rapper to create certain flows or cadences on top of it. This isn't to say that you should never make crazy rolls and crazy patterns because there's beats where that sounds absolutely crazy and artists like it. But when in doubt, keeping things simple is a good method if you're trying to land the placement. Because generally what happens is you can always make things more complicated and a lot of artists will generally tell you to simplify your beat if you make it super complicated, or we'll just skip it entirely. So I always try to keep things simple. Like I know some people who have worked with pretty big artists and they'll have a track that's like 15, 20 layers. And the artist will say, remove everything. And it's just down to like four or five layers. I mean, there's instances where like, boy, Wanda has been on podcasts saying that Drake has asked him to remove elements from beats to simplify them. And boy, Wanda thinks that the track isn't completed, but Drake thinks it's all, all, in, all he needs to kind of paint his picture to rap over it. So sometimes minimal is enough. Again, though, there's tons of hit songs and tons of big records and really impactful songs that have really complicated production. So I'm not saying to simplify every beat. 
I'm not saying to never experiment. Of course you should. And we're even going to experiment. I don't want to just leave this as a two-step. So when I create roles in my hi-hats, I look at them like perks. You know, I think it's very easy to put so, so many roles, but I try to just like hear each role as like a perk sound. And that's kind of my philosophy on how I do it. I also play with velocity on these as well, of course. I think that that's going to be it. We just have these two rolls and these low notes here. What we might even do is pitch these three up a little bit. Like this. And just kind of have a bit more variation. Pitch. Maybe even move this over. Yeah. I like how that sounds complicated enough but it's not as boring but it's still got room next we're going to do the 808 and we're just going to drag one in first thing you want to do i like to boost my 808s and i like to do cut by itself over here you can also do that by doing this where you adjust the you know the uh adsr the envelope and now like whenever you drag this it'll cut early it's like if you hear this right now see how it cuts at the end now it lasts the whole way I really want to do really short 808s, you can. That just depends on how complicated you want your 808 to be. So some beads, I don't even actually use the envelope because I just want to keep it simple. So I just straight up use the cut itself. But today we're going to go ahead and use the envelope just to show you what you can do. So the MIDI here that I have, this is the Melodyne MIDI of my loop. And we're just going to kind of create a simple bounce. Now the first thing I like to do on a lot of my beats is just kind of make like a really simple bounce. So we're just gonna have a bounce like this. This is like a really standard bounce, but it works. Also, we're pitching up the hi-hat, the 808s here, because when you pitch the 808 up, you can kind of hear the tone of the 808 better than when it's down. And so because of that, we can get more accurate with what kind of like pitches we're playing. And then I'm just going to kind of go in here and kind of make things a bit more complicated. Now we're going to push this down. We're going to have the first half of the 8 bar pattern a little simpler. We might even change the sound like different in a way. Yeah, that 808 sounds a little better. Next, we're going to layer a kick on your 808. A lot of producers will say that you don't need to use kicks and placements. And that is true. There are a lot of songs that don't use kicks, but there's also tons that do. So I think just do what sounds good and what you think sounds right there. It's a whole debate on whether you should use them, whether you shouldn't. I think it just comes down to whatever you think is best for the track. And again, worst case, always remove it. You know, especially depending on how good your relationship is with the artist. That's the biggest thing. Like, if you know the artist, they'll take things, they'll tell you to take things out and stuff like that. But if you don't know the artist, they're probably just going to skip your track if it doesn't have, like, the key elements they're looking for. So that's why I always push for don't overcomplicate things too much. Because while Drake might message Boy Wanda and say, yo, can you remove some of these elements? An artist who maybe doesn't know you probably won't go through all those steps. So if they don't hear themselves on it instantly, they'll probably just skip it and go to the next one. The reality is a lot of artists get a lot of tracks. So it's got to kind of fit their vibe. But just like that, we kind of have our whole essentially pattern here with all the elements we need. Let's just get started on the mix. So we have the clap. I boost the highs on it a little bit. Bring in the snare drum. Bring in the hi-hats. Complicate these hi-hats even more. We go into shaper box. Time. Grab this little reverse. We're going to set this to four bars. Just like put the mix down like 25%. Add some more rolls and some more reverses and stuff. As you can see, those got a little more complex even. There we go. All right. So now that we have all the main drums, let's get started on the arrangement. Now, again, no rules to arrangement that 
you necessarily have to follow. These are kind of just like my go-to methods. So what I like to do is have a couple elements in the intro that would get a listener interested, like to get the rapper or the artist to pay attention. I always do this little four bar thing where I throw my tag here. Some people don't like having this or some people would rather just put the tag in like the first eight. I kind of do it like this. It makes it a bit easier. I've noticed for a lot of rappers, but also it just depends. So like no, no necessary process for that. And then what I like to do is I kind of have like an eight bar section with a little more simplified of an intro. So what we're going to do is just have a two step hi hat going for this and the clap with some of the elements just like this. So this is like an intro section. And then I'm going to throw a riser at the end of this. This is kind of to show that like we're going into the more full section of the beat. If a rapper wanted to, I mean, they could make this first eight here, make a pre-hook or a really short intro or verse or even the first half of the hook, really however they want to do it. But then this riser kind of says, now we're going into it. But now here's like the fuller section. I like to do a 16 for that. So I'm just going to let this duplicate over. Sometimes you can do more complicated stuff where like this half is very different. Only difference I have is just a little bit in the melody. So, but it just depends what you want to do. So arrangement can be different for every track. Next, I'm working on the first section here of the verse. I like things to get a little bit more minimal right after the hook just to kind of have that juxtaposition of like the full track. It also gives us time to kind of rebuild things back up, which is something I like to do. A lot of my tracks is start building things up. So like, as you can see, this section here, a bit more simple, this section here, a bit bigger. And then we're just going to duplicate this over like that. Then I just create an outro, which the outro for this track is going to sound like that. I just throw a little volume automation on the end there, just so it fades out nice and clean. But yeah, that's how I go about creating placement tracks. But I'm sure there's tons of other advice and tons of producers who have a lot of successful records might even suggest things differently. So if you have any opinions or ways that you do things, of course, let people know. You know, and the secret is now that you know how I do it, you can take whatever parts of that make sense for your process. You can ignore the parts that don't fit it. You can, you know what I'm saying, like disagree. You can change your process up. And it's just always good to know. You know, I can get inspired by things that producers do all the time. And I take bits, bits and bobs of the way that they work. And the things that I don't agree with, I just keep doing it my way. You know what I mean? That's the thing. You can do things however fits best. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is that you make a sick beat. So if you guys enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out those records on it. Thanks for watching. Head on over to elizabethrecords.net if you'd like to support me. You can purchase VST expansion banks, drum kits, loop kits, and mini kits that'll level up your production there.